bring to more than 400 the number of Iraqi deserters who've joined the Allies. And that tally includes a senior Iraqi general. Their reasons for leaving, low morale and food shortages. American troops are gearing up to receive more than 200,000 deserters and prisoners of war if conflict begins. With time fast slipping away, both sides are digging in deep, not just in a military sense, but diplomatically as well. In Baghdad, a fiery PLO boss, Yasser Arafat, says his troops will side with Iraq on battlefields across the world. We are at a critical point in our history, the point where we will find out whether or not we exist as a nation. If they want war, we are ready for it. But if they want peace, we are ready for it. For his part, Saddam Hussein has repeated the threats, warning that no country in the Allied forces will be safe from attack anywhere in the world. Those threats are being taken seriously in New Zealand. Airports and airlines are being warned to double-check their security procedures. With military forces being moved like chess pieces, hopes of any breakthrough at Geneva tomorrow night our time looks slim. Iraq says it will ignore the UN deadline just one week away and says it plans to attack Israel from the outset in a bid to split the American and Arab allies. US Secretary of State James Baker heads for tomorrow night's talks with only one promise, a promise not to attack Iraq if it leaves Kuwait by next Tuesday. The only real chance that we have for peace, in my opinion, is if Saddam Hussein begins to understand that that deadline is real and that we are serious. While the world anxiously watches the deadly game of brinksmanship being played out, American troops in the Gulf have their own theories on Saddam's threats. At one week away, I still don't think Saddam Hussein seriously thinks we're coming. And I'd like to tell him, we will be there if ordered by President Bush, and we will be ready to go and fight in one week. Ian Wishart, Three National News. As the Ides of January approach, New Zealand's first medical support team is warming up for their role in the Gulf crisis. Each morning at Burnham Military Camp, the troops sweat their way through a gruelling circuit three times. As the exercise stops become shorter, the running circuit is extended. It's imperative they begin to acclimatise themselves to the sweltering heat conditions expected in the Gulf. A range of pressure drills wearing the chemical warfare suits and simulated medical care in a war zone is scheduled for the afternoons. It now seems unlikely the team will arrive at their mission before the January 15 deadline, but they're prepared to go at any time. They can move at a moment's notice, and uh, the act actual date I can't give you at this stage. We're still negotiating with the United States and with the host country. What they do now know is who they'll be working alongside once they arrive. We're going to be joining up with a U.S. medical facility and it'll be what we call a third echelon facility. In other words, we're back in the communication zone, a um, hospital establishment. Details of where the medical team will be stationed are being kept secret. Security's also been highlighted at New Zealand airports. A general alert's been issued to remind staff to enforce normal security but to also be extra vigilant as fear of terrorist attacks mount in the week leading up to the UN deadline. Rose Daly, 3 National.